How we doing, everyone? I'm here with Mr. Brendan O'Connell, the one, the only, the myth, the legend. Uh, brother, how you been? Hello. How are you, Mark? Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hell yeah, dude. I'm, I'm uh, doing well. I'm happy that you are here. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys uh, watching through the internet. Uh, it's a Sunday afternoon. Brendan and I are just kind of shooting the shit. We've been on, you know, off camera here for... I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so. And um, I made a few videos and me and Brennan talk almost every single day. And we talk about like, you know, kind of API, like trying to get more into API stuff. Brennan's obviously got a ton of stuff over on his channel already. Go check it out. Make sure you're sub subscribed if you're not already. Um, and we're just like playing in this arena of, I feel like we've graduated a little bit from basic websites, like static. When I say static, I mean like non-dynamic, not necessarily straight up static in the sense of, you know, no CMS and stuff. We graduated from there. We graduated kind of in the dynamic data realm, and we were, we got pretty good grasp on that. And I feel like the next logical step is trying to integrate with other things outside of our own websites, more so than already that we do. So like I said, Brennan's been doing a lot of that on the API front. We just went over some things that I have some videos coming out, depending on when you're watching this. They're probably already on the channel about some random things that I've been doing. Um, and we're just here to talk. We're just here to have a, have a good chat, um, see what we can do. If we can play around at all. Um, yeah. So um, just to bring you guys up to speed, that's kind of what we talked about. A bunch of different things, specifically around Claude too, like utilizing uh, Claude from Anthropic AI to just basically make things, make like code snippets, potentially custom plugins that do little things, like whether that's integrating with a YouTube API or adding and extending pieces of bricks, like custom dynamic data tags or conditions or whatever. I'm learning a lot. I think Brendan finds this interesting. I don't know. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I mean, this is like, as you said, it's like a continuation of, of the trajectory of like dynamic websites with ACF, Metabox, things like that, where instead of having everything in your WordPress database, you're trying to pull in things from Google Sheets, Google, other Google products that you need to get access to. I think we're going to look at some YouTube stuff. That's another Google product. So like, Using APIs is, is not, it, it sounds, I think, more daunting than people, uh, you know, at, like at first value, at first, first glance, but like, it's really, it's a familiar concept. If you built websites, it's, uh, it's just sort of abstracted out a couple layers. So yeah, I'm excited 100%. to jump into it. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have a plan for this. Like I said, we kind of talked about a few different things, but I mean, from your end, Brendan, like, what do you, I know you've tinkered a lot with a lot of different, a lot of different tools and give me your give me your high level and we're going to do a live stream obviously soon i don't know when this is going to go out in relation to that but so make sure you guys tune into that but what what would you say brennan on your end of this the tooling that you've looked at and everything like that even in comparison to wordpress do a lot are a lot of them like integrating directly and making it easy to integrate with like third-party apis like youtube and things like that because in my mind there might be easy ways to do that in WordPress. There's probably is plugins where you can hook that up and everything like that. But I'm also thinking here with some of the code that we just talked about off camera, we can look at again. Like there's a ton of, it's it's actually not that hard with, with AI now. Like, I mean, like I was able to do it and I don't know what the hell I'm doing on the code side. So mm -hmm. like, what's, what is the other tooling like right now? Like what's the lay of the land from what you've seen in WordPress and other tools? Yeah. I mean, that, and that's what we were talking about kind of right before this was I, what I've been looking at are, are some of the apps like uh, Div Hunt and Toddle, which are non WordPress builders, um, which have a REST API sort of built into the builder, and you can build your own sort of REST API calls that call out to the other, you know, external things, basically calling in your custom post types externally. And it's very much a visual experience. It's not. Uh, and what you were showing me with Claude is like, you're, you know, it's writing PHP for you, which is which is great. And you can decipher that and all that. But I, I was definitely interested in the actual having a, a UI to build uh, APIs was pretty cool. Yeah, it's interesting. We can pull some of that up too. So we had some stuff to check out. Um, we don't, like I said, we don't need to rehash this. I just talked Brendan Zero for like 30 minutes. And then also like I have these videos up. So they'll be linked if we're in the description here or wherever we take a look at any of this stuff here. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, just at a high level, I think it's pretty incredible now what we can do with just like a little bit of prompting and then how much knowledge these, these things kind of have. So, you know, and I, and again, I walked into this literally talking to Brendan very, very, uh, have a hefty amount recently about like the, the YouTube API and the other things. And I have 
I just it's it's kind of incredible how I was just able to just ask this thing to do this, go grab my API key, obviously in this case from YouTube, and then kind of uh, you know go about it. Uh, it's you know, but I, that that said though, that said though, is I'm definitely not super comfortable with code. However, I would it, it was okay, but I would I would absolutely though love a UI as well. And I mean, I don't mm -hmm. is. So you're saying though, with those other builders, like that's kind of like visually embedded and, and integrated into them as builders, so to speak, right? Like, do you think that's something that like a bricks could do or would do? And like, how do you even, yeah, like, what's, I mean, what's that even look like, do you think? Yeah, like, so for instance, we can see here, uh, like the API URL that has mm -hmm. the Google APIs and, and you would paste that in and it would strip out the, the, first part of the URL that ends in the .com and then below that it would show the, the various paths that it takes and all those can be set dynamically within the builder as well. So you can create variables, for example, like the your API key, you would just go and say create new variable and instead of a CSS variable, it's a JavaScript variable or whatever whatever it is exactly, I guess it's a PHP variable here. Um, so, so that you can just have that type in your variable and then it also can call dynamically with that. So. It's not dissimilar, and actually, I know this isn't like an advertisement for Claude or anything, but, but mm -hmm. I do like that it shows it side by side. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I've been using ChatGPT, I guess, primarily, and I haven't used Claude that much, but I do like that it's giving you some explanation here too. So that's that's kind of a nice, nice thing. Yeah. But yeah, do I see do I see Bricks doing that? Bricks probably. I mean, I think you can do a lot of this stuff with Bricks if you know PHP, and you can write it into the into the elements, like into your text elements, and it'll pull in stuff from your from your API. There's also a plugin uh, WP get API that's specifically mm -hmm. for for doing this. And I think that again, like you, you probably need to know some PHP, if not a good amount to really take full advantage of it. Uh, but I, again, I haven't really looked at that too closely. Interesting. For, I'm wondering, I'm wondering for that, if for for WP get API I might have to bring it up or something like how to do, how does that the thing here's the, here's my disconnect right now. Maybe it's just because I'm very new to this. Is like this makes sense to me in a sense. Like I have a function. I'm defining my API. I'm defining my URL. Like everything is here, and I and it's like it. I don't know exactly what all these steps are doing. As an example, you know, we've talked about this, and they're in the other videos. But I don't know exactly what all these steps are doing. But I can understand that like we're connecting to an API. We're checking some shit, and then we're doing some stuff on our end, right? But like with a plugin like that. But this was very custom. So with a plugin like that. Are you just connecting to it and then you have to like do the stuff elsewhere like tell it what to do elsewhere i wonder or is that i mean we could just look it up too but like what's your understanding of that one yeah well i think uh yeah i mean if you, you it's a free there's a free version of it too um, is this one yeah okay and so i don't know i think the way the way it's doing is it's you don't have to build you don't have to build the functions like that mm -hmm. like it's doing you just have to know the endpoints so you have to know okay, I need to get my channel ID. And if, if you could figure that out, it's going to do a lot of that sort of heavy PHP lifting for you, is my understanding. Interesting. And then with the pro version, I think it it might even be easier to use. Uh, like they, 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 they like make it so you don't have to write any PHP. I, I, again, I, I'd have to check it out. I'm kind of tempted to buy it. So hmm. uh, well, I'm, looking I'm, looking forward to the, I'm looking forward to the video. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, because like this seems like really... I feel like we're 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 now. I mean, we've always been in it, so to speak, with WordPress. But I feel like we're now like really starting to understand, at least for myself, maybe maybe you as well. But like, like I kind of get like just looking at these screenshots, kind of what's going on. But I'm trying to think of more of the meta of it's like there's the data, and then there's the actual like display of that data, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how those two. Obviously, not how they not how they they come to be, but like it's we're just there's a, we talk about this whole idea of like you know levels of abstraction and different things like that and and how it all kind of comes together. And I think that there's a lot of things that I know that I certainly still don't understand about like how I would get this data in here. Like one big question is every time I talk about an API and think about an API situation is, are we like for this as an example? I don't know what this this one is, right? But finance financial data like is this something that we would bring into our database and maybe store as a custom post type? Or is this something that we would call like every so often directly from the API and just like dynamically show 
You know what I mean? Like as a, right. as a, as a, like, I mean, if I, That's if good. I bought this plugin, is this going to be like a short code? You know what I mean? Cause like, this is, this is the reason that I, that I love WordPress and I'll say like page builders and like kind of where core is going, where you can separate the data. And this is not a, this is not a new concept, but like there's this concept of like the data is over here and then, and then you're building over here and you're pulling in the data into exact spots, right? As soon as I learned about dynamic data and all that, that was awesome. I feel like right before that is like a short code that you that you just stick in there and right. you can't really style it at all. You can't change it at all. You can't do anything to it. And it's like, okay, that's cool. I have this thing in here, but I but I can't do anything with it. Right. So and it usually I, looks I've, pretty sterile and it looks like exactly. a, a graph like that. And you're not really exactly yeah. exactly. So I'm wondering, yeah. like, is that kind of what we have going on here? I have no idea about that's a good question. Kit, I actually yeah. don't. I don't know. But, yeah. but but to answer your question about is it live data? I believe that is live data, which makes me think it's not rendered. Right into your WordPress database at all. It's done directly on the canvas with an API call. So that would be another question though, is, so the first question is, and I know we're just talking theory here of just API stuff, but hopefully you guys are enjoying this if you're if you're thinking in this realm as well. The, sec the, so the first question is like, do we store it or do we not store it, so to speak, like super simplistically. Then the mm -hmm. second thing is, if we do store it, then how often do we update that store? Because if we're not storing it, then we're probably just going to update it like either every page load, or I'm sure that gets ridiculous sometimes. I'm sure you should probably like not do it every single time if you don't have to. But like, you know, you, should, you delay the store, the, 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 the refreshing of it or caching it or whatever. Right. But then if you do store it, right? Like, so let's say that I, for some reason, I wanted to put the price of Bitcoin and like several other cryptos in my database, like as custom post types, mm -hmm. but I wanted to update them in the, like I guess in the background potentially like every ten minutes, you know what I mean? I I, I feel like that might yeah. make yeah. So 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 no, I mean that and that is that is probably how it was done. I I don't know actually. I would assume that's how it was done in in the past more regularly. But what it does is there's there's the actions of a REST API, which is get, which is just go go out and find the data and return it to me, just mm -hmm. show it. And then there's what uh patch or update basically where it will go out fetch new data if the if it is different from what is already in your database it will it will update the, the value in your database in wordpress right yeah uh, so it's not actually doing the dynamic fetch and render it's just doing the fetch and then displaying through wordpress actions hmm. so so i mean yeah that is something that it changes so much that you probably don't want to do that because you're going to do too many API calls because you're going to be mm -hmm. fetching it, getting it, updating it, fetching it again, up to, you're doing this cycle over and over again, rather than just this, uh, you know, sort of just on the canvas, right? Just, just fetching right. it. So I don't know how, I don't know how well that was explained. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that does make sense. I think, I think the, the next thing that we should do, I mean, we obviously we could do it on maybe, maybe a really cool thing to just test it out on the live stream, I feel like is, because I've, I've come to you this with this idea of, and, w and both of us, like I, I know you've already done it in certain ways. And I think I have a, knowing literally what you've, what I've seen from you and what I've learned from like Claude, these couple experiences, whatever, I really want to try to do a situation where basically I leverage the YouTube API to insert you, my, like my entire catalog of YouTube videos and future videos into actual posts on my website, like custom posts, like video custom mm -hmm. post types. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking a lot about that at a high level. So obviously in that case, I'm not just going to render them all. Cause I mean, I've actually used plugins in the past where it literally just shows them on the screen. Like sure. it just render it, it fetches them or whatever. And it renders That's and how it, it stays right live. Now. Yeah, exactly. And it, and it shows them that it shows them there. And it's just like a grid, but you can't really, I mean, obviously you can style and stuff like that, maybe via the UI of the plugin, but it's obviously tough and you got to pay for it. And it's like, I think there's, I think there's probably a way where I can get much more control, a little bit more work on the front end, but also make it like probably lighter weight and do it the way that I would do it manually, which is literally create a video's custom post type, create the custom fields that I need, and then just copy and paste the shit in, which I don't want to do. So it's yeah, like, I yeah. feel like there's probably a way to just be like, okay, I'm going to create a video's custom post type. I'm going to create, I mean, the title is going to be the video title. The, the featured image will be the thumbnail. Probably most likely a link. We could talk more about that, whether you should bring the video in or not, or bring the video off or not. I don't think that's really super viable, but put the put the link in there just as an example, just so we can embed it. Put a mm -hmm. transcription in there, put a description in there. 
Um, maybe some categories if you want. Those might have to be a little different though because you, you wouldn't be able to pull those out of there. But oh, the duration of the video, right? Mm. And then just simply, I say simply, m map the, what are they called when you pull out from an API? Is it like fields? Is it, um, if, if I was pulling from a video, so I was pulling like a video, uh, it's probably from, just variables. I think they, okay. Unless I'm thinking about it wrong. Well, that would be, that would be kind of because they, because they're also, that. they're going to change every video, right? It's going to be potentially a different category, different URL, different title. Yeah. So it's, it is, I think they're just variables that, that you attach to like whatever the new channel ID or whatever the yeah. new uh, video ID is. That would be it. Yeah. So it's like basically just saying like, Hey, I mean, I, I think I literally kind of did this here, like over in Claude somewhere. I was like dynamically display my YouTube. So I was like, I'm using WordPress and Bricks Builder. How do I use the YouTube API to dynamic? Uh, well, this is the live one. There's another one here that I put importing my YouTube videos. Um, so I have a WordPress website using Bricks and Jet Engine. I have video CPT set up. Um, I have a YouTube channel with a ton of videos. Uh, and live streams on it. How do I import all of them and list and and listen for future videos to move automatically? So I think that this is the beginning of me trying to figure out what I'm explaining. Um, but you know, this is kind of you know where it, where it sends you. Just if you guys have never used um, like the Claude situation, but I don't know what would happen if I just threw this in as a custom as a custom plugin right and, now. And this but, is basically what what my Active Pieces script does. That I think I have. Okay. I think I show that in, the, in one of my earlier videos on it, where it's just it listens to any time there's a new video added to my channel, mm -hmm. and it takes that, you know, when you when you upload the name, like you have you're, you're writing in the title, you're writing in a description, and it creates that link right away. So then, you know, you can push it. I push it to my WordPress site. I push it to to Twitter and I think LinkedIn or something. But I mean, you can do whatever you want after that as well. We would, and that might be, should, I mean, that would, yeah, that'd be like, so, you know, not, it's not quite like a custom plugin, like what you're showing here, but yeah, it might be worth showing just the difference. I'm not married to the custom plugin idea necessarily. Um, I just think that Claude is cool and it's, it's something like it, like it's, sure. it's worked for me so far, but. And you're actually me, seeing it kind of like you are seeing the, like you, you're seeing the, the channel ID and you're seeing what it equals the type it equals a video part snippet. I mean. You, it's, you start to piece it together and and Claude's really helping help, helping lift the, the PHP banner for us. So here's let's 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 hit on that for a second though. So over here in active pieces because this is what I've tried and this is this is my I would say like I have a love hate relationship not with active pieces active pieces is amazing but like with active pieces maybe it's because I don't know enough about like active pieces Zapier I've used make. Here's my issue is that this is really great and I think it could work, but I'm missing important information. So like for instance, new video and channel, right? That's That seems pretty straightforward. I'm not sure if this would, is this gonna grab all of them in the past though too, you think? So so really quick, you can, if you make that a little bigger and drag the result yep. thing at the bottom up, you don't have to okay. zoom in, I mean, yeah, like okay. pull that up. And okay. so it'll pull in Let's look at the date, 724, so that it's probably grabbing your last 10. And so if you go to result zero, that'll be your most recent one at the uh, very top there. Okay. Uh, there, yeah. Uh, result interesting. one. Interesting. So yeah, if you go this and you can see, you'll see the date at the top there. There's 815. So that's uh, yeah. well, just a couple days ago, right? Okay. Could, can then, I get all of them though or no? Like even like way back when or no? You know. uh, well, so so what this is doing this this is a trigger. This saying, is a sample. This this is the same. Any of the new any new video gets uploaded. What you could do is have another. It would it would have to be a different trigger. It would have to be, you know, on a schedule. Do a call to my channel. Uh, you know, and and yeah. find find you know get the but the other thing with with APIs is that you have to get uh you have to do pagination a lot so like. If you do a default WordPress API call, it just mm. gives you the last 10 posts, which is probably what's mm. going on here. And there's no way to edit the parameters in here that I can see. It's just, you know, I if see. you, for instance, if you click on the create post in WordPress, that would show you, uh, if you, you know, it shows you all the WordPress parameters for title, content, and then there should be um, ACF fields. There's like status. 
Yeah. So some of the some of these are like key value pairing, and and I, we're missing that. It looks like you're right in the in the YouTube trigger there. So gotcha. Okay. So so that that makes sense to me. So like here's here's where I have struggled with active pieces, and honestly, like and, and not just active pieces, Zapier and everything is what I feel like. What I love about UIs is that it's like simpler, so to speak. Right? It's easier. It's awesome. However, if you get to a point where you're like deep into the UI and the thing doesn't, and I'm not sure about active pieces, but I'm saying if it, if it, mm -hmm. if it doesn't have a way to extend it further to get the exact thing that you want, then I, then it's like, damn, like I, I came this far and like, I don't know how to do it. So let me give you an example. Really cool that they have custom ACF fields. I think that works exactly how I think it works potentially. Like if I can grab like the duration of, um, you know, the duration of this YouTube video. And I could say like, okay, like if I can reference that somehow, I'm not exactly sure how I would reference that or whatever. Oh, like if I go over here maybe, and I get like one of these things and I say, you know, whatever, right, like whatever my, or whatever. Yeah. Right. Whatever my value is, or I'm sorry, whatever my key is and my, my, I'm assuming that's like it, the slug of like an ACF field. And then you say like, okay, I want that to equal in this post. I want the duration or the category field Correct. to equal this category thing that we're pulling in that totally yeah. makes sense to me however what if you're using acpt or jet engine or metabox right is there a way to use now i i understand they're effectively the same things but i think sometimes they're either prefix different or in different places or some shit or whatever and it's like that to me is where it's like damn like i got here and it's because i'm not using acf like in this case i'm using um jet engine yeah. jet engine so it's like how do i do you know of a way? Am I missing something there? Right. So, and and that was like I think one of my other videos too was like doing because I don't even, I don't even think they had that when I when I made this. Yeah. Because I had to do it through JSON where I, I was writing down, mm. the, you know, ACF title equals that. I do remember that. Um, and so that I mean that works right. And you could, you could probably do it. I don't know what Jet Engine's like little prefix is in in the database. Yeah. It's probably it's probably jet engine or jet underscore mm -hmm. engine or maybe it's ge or je yeah um, metabox i think it's just metabox uh ruben from headspin was asking me how to do it with metabox and he, he literally just did follow the same directions and replaced acf with metabox and it worked uh, but yeah i mean that there's not a ui for that and that is kind of one of the you're right that is the downside of these is like once you commit to making a ui it's like you, you either make it for everything or you're gonna run into a point where you're you're, you're basically writing custom code yeah. Um, hmm. And I will say also there are there are limitations in this. Yeah, like I don't know if you checked out the transcribe audio. I think that there's a, a megabyte limit on the file size. So if it's like a video that you're trying to down like grab the audio from, might not hmm. might not work, and it might have to be an MP3. It might not work if it's MP4. That kind of yeah. stuff. So there there are definitely some some downsides and limitations that. You know, I'm just hoping that they get better. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, Active Pieces seems great. It seems, honest to God, way better than like Zapier and all the other ones too. It's like very, seems very generous in a lot of ways. And like they have a lot of, lot of connections and a lot of really cool um, like steps and different things. So I'm, I'm, I'm geeked on it. I just, I'm trying to think like, I don't know, for, for the, for the things that I'm trying to do specifically, like. I don't know, just kind of a cost benefit analysis of like coming in here and doing it like this, or if there's just a simple way for me to do, you know, what I need to do on a, uh, just from a Claude custom situation. No, it's really interesting because like, I, again, I haven't even been considering that mostly because, uh, I've, cr I crashed a couple sites <laughs> doing that with, with just like throwing in some PHP and not looking at it carefully enough. Um, but and so this, I've been relying on this, but it's is it's you, you've been doing the opposite. So I'm I'm glad that you're sharing that perspective. Thank you. Yeah, no, for sure. I think I don't know if there's the the tough part for me is like I mean that that this idea with the API stuff spawned out of you know what we we're talking about earlier was the 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 stuff that you couldn't do with it's a, it's it's related like Claude can do both of them so to speak, but it's not it's not this it's not like connecting to an API and importing data. It's like changing and extending like bricks as an example and i want to i want to get your opinion on this real quick because i feel like there's a good chance that we might be able to obviously continue collaborating i'm sure you're going to experiment yourself with more of the stuff that we're talking about there with the um like the dynamic 
like the, the API that Bricks has that allows it to extend it with dynamic tags and dynamic conditions and all that sort of stuff that opened up a world for me. But you know what? You know what's really interesting? I'm going to take this in a totally different direction for a second. Do you think, we'll go back here for a minute. Do you think what happened to me when I, when I extended Bricks a little bit was like, that's kind of really interesting because what if I could just extend core for the things that I want to do? Now, obviously, that's like a way big difference. And obviously, people are already doing that because the API, like the core WordPress REST API is like really good. And you have things like grade, you have like all this other stuff. But like, and I guess generate practice and everything like that, I guess that's, is that effectively what they're doing? Am I missing the mark on that? I mean, they're just basically extending core with like custom blocks and things like that. You might not even need the API for some of that stuff, but like, right. just, is that, I don't know. That would make sense. sense. I mean, that I think I've, I never really thought about it that way, but that, that is I would assume that's kind of how it works, right? Yeah. And you can't, because you can't really modify core. I think if you go to the developer.wordpress.org, whatever, I think the, one of the first things is like never modify the core files because those get over, overwritten every update. So it's effectively like, you know, semi forking it or just extending, sending, sending the functionality, right? Yeah. Just kind I of like, well, that's kind of what everything does at the end of the day, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, I think, I think we're, I think we're, on the right track at explaining this. Obviously, never really done it other than this little bit that I've played around with in, in Bricks. But I just thought that was really interesting. Was like, you know, we see all the other creators and the and the devs and like they're 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 basically like curating experiences or they're 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 doing whatever like to the side panels and stuff like that. I'm assuming I'm assuming some of that stuff is API related or what have you. Like turning stuff on, turning stuff off making new things like making new new panels or whatever that are probably like there's probably like easy utilities for some of the stuff because there's already right. like toggles and switches and shit that you could just like utilize and just change variables change functions stuff like that i don't know it's just a whole and, new and world to me right and then i think just recently they, they have released a block binding api to i guess further extend the the patterns or something like that is my understanding i don't i, I have yeah. to honestly look at it more but it seems like core is is heavily leaning into rest api functionality and things like that regularly because it you know it's built in to wordpress which is great yeah and a lot of this stuff is is just yeah making a ui for it on the side of the <laughs> gutenberg panel mm -hmm. so that people can figure it out yeah hmm. well I might have to play around with that more because i feel like if i can get if i can get claude to understand bricks then it probably really does understand like a lot of WordPress already, because I mean, it's so big and there's so much documentation and I could probably, and I can never understand the WordPress documentation when I look at it, if I ever have like times that I have. So I could definitely just dump that into there. I don't know, just another random I think, idea. I think Max, uh, Max on that AI stream a couple of weeks mm -hmm. back was talking about how it doesn't quite have all the bricks data just because bricks is so new. Exactly. But I guess if you're, if you, I saw you just copy and paste some stuff from their documentation mm -hmm. directly in it, it seemed to, so, so potentially you're you're teaching it to get better at bricks, I guess. I was really surprised about that 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 it's just able to kind of like it's kind of able to absorb whatever you give it, and then marry that with those prompts, and then you can just kind of go from there, which is which is pretty crazy. Do you do you think I'm trying to think of more, you know, API adjacent type ideas that we can actually use in practice, and that possibly other people could use in practice too that again kind of because everything is like easier now whether it's with a ui like an active pieces or just a custom plugin or whatever i feel like there's this like we could buy a plugin we could use a free plugin or whatever but again i just like the control i mean we're creators we're, do, we're doing a lot of this stuff ourselves like we have a if we have a vision for what we want and we can easily ascertain it and not have to like you know spend months coding something or whatever then i feel like there's just a lot of upside to that is there anything that you can that you've thought of recently that you like really want to do that maybe we should show off as well? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I I've been messing around with just random APIs. I mean, I think what would be cool to maybe just throw out a survey to people, get get what they're dealing yeah. with. Because I think one one of the things that that initiated my looking into this more was was a conversation with Nick Arce, you know, a month or so back was about he wanted to use Notion, I think, as his CMS uh, within mm. WordPress, right? Like he wanted to, mm. to have this table 
but have that rendered within WordPress. And, and I was talking to someone else in the ACSS community. I think they wanted to use Airtable, right? So it's like th those are two. They want to use it for the same purpose, but and the and the method is pretty much the same. But what's changing? The, what's changing is the API structure and the, your key. That's it. Because the, the actual CMS structure is probably the same. It's probably got a post title. It's probably got content. It's probably got a featured image. But so so the idea of being able to use other, you know, we get clients all the time that have their data in Sheets or in Excel or in Airtable or in Notion, all these different platforms. So if we are able to solve sort of putting those all in a bucket of like CMS or like content or whatever, and then use APIs to, to render that as we want either the method you showed or like you know th through uh, through a plugin or whatever um i think that's an, that's a good way to be thinking outside of wordpress while still utilizing wordpress yeah i don't it's there's just i mean i feel like there's just so many options to go back to that though can you can you think of like the quick cost benefit analysis of using the other like other platforms as the basically the database, I guess, like the CMS portion of it, or like what what do you think? I can't think of reasons right now. So, so I mean, like, for instance, I think I think a lot of people want to turn their WordPress site into a one size fits all like one stop shop where they've got their courses, their videos, mm -hmm. their user base. Like some people have their like ticketing system for their business attached to their WordPress database. And it's like, I don't think, I don't think you really want to do that. <laughs> bigger, bigger, bigger web apps are sort of more decentralized because it's easier to scale and maintain things when not everything's in one giant WordPress basket. So I don't know. I don't know if that really answers your question. Like, there's also downsides in that it's like, I think SEO can be affected, right? If you're just rendering stuff with APIs, like you're not actually, you don't actually have HTML there. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, there, there's other there's other considerations. Yeah. But I mean, you mm -hmm. you probably have run into this, right? Like, you've been doing agency work for for five plus years, right? Like, mm -hmm. someone's brought you a site that it was just a monstrosity that they had. Mm -hmm. Uh, their whole email newsletter system in their WordPress database. Oh, yeah. They had uh, their whatever, you know, so we're, we're always trying to prevent that from happening. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. I think that is, that's a good topic. I mean, in and of itself is just like how kind of, where do you draw the line? Um, I actually, I, I played with, I think, is it called mail poet? The one that's in one of the ones that's in um, WordPress, I think. Uh, that's, that's one. I, it's a, it's know. a plug it. Yeah. So there's yeah. that one. I played around with that. I see, I like the concepts there. There's like, it's like kind of like a shiny object and I'm not saying that's a good or bad situation. I'm just saying like, if you think about it, right, you're a critical thinker, you think about it, you're like, okay, I have all my posts on my website. Mm -hmm. It's probably a really, it's like literally the thing that showed that was cool about it to me was that I could automatically weekly send out like the updates of the posts that I put on my website. Like it was just real quick and you're just like two clicks and you're basically done. It's like, hey, every week send out an automated email if there's new new posts and it just shoots it out. Really cool in concept. You could probably build that some other way though. Like you could probably build that with an active pieces. You could probably, you know, integrate the API of some other mailing plugin with WordPress and do that same thing if you didn't have MailPoet on your, you know, as your sure. email marketing platform. So that's one thing. The other big one I've seen is like Fluent, I guess Fluent CRM, right? I haven't used it, but like that's like your whole CRM, I guess, in WordPress effectively, or maybe it's yeah. also and I think they have, they have like Fluent support too, which is like, I think support tickets, mm -hmm. right? I love the concept. I, like on the surface, I love the concept of like the one-stop shop for everything. And I've, and I've, and I've tried it before in a sense, like, like full group membership platform, like e-commerce, uh, learning management system, like all of that on there, like a buddy, uh, like a buddy boss type right. of situation where you have everything on there. I go back and forth because I love the idea of specifically because it's WordPress of owning all of that and owning mm -hmm. all of the the data and everything like that. But I'm I'm just like torn because I see a lot of people and they'll use like a circle, you know, as, as specifically for the group membership thing. It's like right. a circle or whatever. And I'm like, I'm still struggling with which one's better, which one's worse or like the cost benefit totally. of each. And then not only that, like a third way you could do it, I guess, if you really wanted to, 
is have it all in WordPress, but have them on different, like basically installs, like different yeah, subdomains, subdomains. Where, like I, mm -hmm. which is like, that's a whole nother separation of like, questions and concerns and like or you I mean, can I use multi-site i was literally just gonna say that i was like you know you, <laughs> you you're a big multi-site guy like i'm wondering if that's if that's a way to do it funny enough what i see a lot of like celebrities do specifically artists is i've seen multiple like we, like we saw with taylor swift like when we did the bridge builder stuff and whatever like she did uh like her and post Malone or whatever they'll do wordpress for their main domain and then if you click on like their merch it's over on shopify, shopify. so yeah. it's like I don't know. I and mean, that's again, a whole different conversation, but it all kind of like mulls together is like, what do you want to do? How much like connecting do you want to do manually or via like a UI? And then how does, how do you manage it all? I feel like. You know, a, I mean, I it's know. a really, it's like, this is evolving into a bigger discussion than, than, yeah. than I even thought, because I think that that is, that's super important, right? Because we're also, this we're talking about WordPress, right? We're not in the just generic web design scene necessarily, right? Like we're talking about WordPress. Yeah. And one of the reasons people use WordPress is because it is self-contained, because it has user registration, it has posts with categories and date formats, it has authors, it has all that. We're, we're not, at a certain point, we're not saying don't, you know, don't use WordPress. There's a reason that we're, we're using it. Um, and maybe that's, maybe it's a little foolhardy to think that we can just, connect all these things externally and not, not use WordPress for, for most of this stuff. Like, isn't that like at the end of the day, wouldn't, wouldn't we just be better off not using WordPress then if we're talking about extracting, extra, abstracting everything away from it? I don't so, know. It's, that's interesting. I mean, these, these are good questions. Cause like, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what like the best scenario is in, in some of them. I mean, again, and, yeah. Like, and, the, and full disclaimer, right. We're both of us are like talking and thinking through this right now. We're not, we're not telling yeah. you one way, have, one way or another. I have no idea because, what I'm doing. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's all part of it is like project by project. How is this project going to scale? Like, is there a plan to scale it? Is, is that even on the table? Like, why are they choosing WordPress to begin with and not using, uh, you know, Firebase for their users and, uh, you know, Notion for the CMS and, you know, just abstracted all everything out into APIs? which is like how a lot of apps are built to begin with. Do you want to build, like, is it going to be a SaaS app? Is there, what are the limitations of WordPress there? There's probably a ton that I don't know about too. Um, so yeah, there's, it's a really interesting conversation. Yeah. I don't know if there's any real answers. I did hear something recently. It's, uh, it's funny because I'm gonna have to make some content about this, but um, have you ever read uh, the, was it a year, a year without pants or the year without pants? And it's, it's a book so. by, by, Scott Birkin, I believe is his name. And it's about WordPress because he worked at Automatic for like a year or three years or something like that. So it like has this full, I just, I was just listening to it this weekend. So that's why it's top mind. But there was a separate discussion on that because it's a really good and interesting book. Uh, but specifically what we're talking about here is there's one line in there and it's not like a unique line, but it's like something like a fool puts the, you know, the, I can't, I'm going to miss, mispronounce and miss remember it now, but it's like, if you don't like think about the project before the tools, then you're kind of like going backwards, which is, again, mm -hmm. there's so many contradictions in everything that I see nowadays. Cause like, I'm not sure, like I want to have a stack, but at the same time, like I, I want to use the right tools for the job. And it's mm -hmm. like, maybe my tools that I have are not the right tools for the job and not, not the right tools for every job. And I just think that that's really important because we kind of need to remember that as well. And that that's ties right. directly into the situation where it's like, should we have, we want to do courses, we want to do group membership, we want to do blog, we want to do e-commerce. Like, should that all be on the same thing or should it not be? Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, how do, you man, how do you make that decision? Like, especially if the business doesn't have some of that stuff set up and, and they're kind of entrusting you to, yeah. to like guide them on that. That's, that's yeah, it's a lot. So it keeps so people weird. up at night, that's for sure. Yeah, so I don't really know. We don't have. I don't know if we have if we have too many answers on the stream, but we've definitely uh, brought up some good, some good uh, questions here. Um, I think this has been uh, pretty good. Uh, I, I, you know, appreciate you uh, chatting with me, brother, because I definitely need to get some of these thoughts out and everything like that. Um, I think. Uh, I think my plan here. I think we should. We'll release this. Obviously, like we said, we're, we're just chatting on a Sunday afternoon. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. I'll release this here probably on Monday, and then. Uh, probably if all courting all goes well, you guys will probably be watching this on potentially like 
the 19th of August and then on the 22nd. Just check on the channel and everything like that. We should be live uh, this Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, Brendan and I. And maybe we'll be doing some cool um, API stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll put out like polls and stuff, I guess, me and you, Brendan, like just to kind of see if anybody wants to see anything specific. But then if yeah. not, we could just we could do some general things. But yeah, I mean, if you guys are interested in this, definitely let us know. Please go show Bre please go show Brendan some love over on his channel. <laughs> he has a lot of really interesting stuff that um, just the catalog with the more recent, especially the more recent API things that I don't even I, I'm still confused. I'm just I'm just asking Claude stuff and hoping it gives me good code back. So <laughs> no, far, we're, really we're gonna look good. at we're gonna look at a UI. It's gonna be great. We're gonna no, we're, we're we can build we can build something too. Like I want to show you. Yeah. I just want to show you that different like what I've been obsessing yeah. with and because like I love this Claude stuff too. I gotta we're gonna have to take oh, yeah. a deeper dive on that because the yeah. way you walked me through like your thought process too of like yeah. instructing it, getting it getting what you need. I mean I know that's yeah. that's just how it works, but like. Uh, I, feel, I felt like a boomer. <laughs> well, it's 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 just funny, dude. I mean, you get in there and you're just like you have you literally have to see these things as like just like not people, but like assistants in the sense of like they're just type they're like typing away or whatever. They're they're they have some of the knowledge, and you just you have an idea. They have the knowledge, so to speak, mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily have, and then you have to guide them. I really this is a super super tangential thing, but we're on this cloud thing. Like, I really think that. It makes me feel, because I'm I haven't been like the best, so to speak, at like delegating or managing. And this sounds mm -hmm. probably really ridiculous, but I feel like if I could get really good at managing an AI, I might be able to like manage people better, and so to speak. Because, like you're like you saw kind of how I was talking to it. And if you guys just watch those other videos, you see what I'm saying. Like I'm talking to it as I'd be talking to another person. I think that's like the best way to think about these mm -hmm. AI assistants right now because they they are they're not people obviously but they they have like that knowledge base that you can extract the information out of but you can't it's just like a person like you can't expect the person to read your goddamn mind like mm -hmm. you have to give it you have to give a little bit and then you can get what you want out of it and that's i guess the whole science of prompt engineering now to a certain to a certain extent um at the same time so, it's you're, it's also kind of changing how uh, i've noticed it, maybe you have too it's changing how i think where i'm kind of preempting like i know that it's gonna i know it's gonna come back to me with like it's gonna be unsure on this thing so i'm kind of making my question maybe a little clearer or just saying hey don't worry about if the code's perfect i just want you to explain the concept to me and right i think that's pretty cool too that is it's like very human human conversational in that i story. actually i actually yeah i mean when you take a step back and think about it like that i actually think that if more like bosses and managers actually took that approach with their employees though that's what i'm saying is i think mm -hmm. that they would get a lot more out of them where it's like you know you know because that's how you get it that's how you get out of this ai thing i mean again a, a person is not is not a machine in that sense so there's a lot of other variables but at the same time um i just i just think that a lot of times because it's a human to human conversation, you know, in the real world, we kind of think sometimes that like we can read each other's minds or we know like what we're talking about. And if you don't actually go through the, you know, asking the question and asking for the thing is almost just as like important as the actual right. answer itself. You have to like, you have to give that, that effort there if you want to get something back um, that's equivalent or greater in value. So totally. And, and, uh, and actually, isn't that like, that's what makes a good teacher. Uh, the best yeah. teachers are the ones that don't know everything that admit that and are still learning all the time. And so if you're refining your instructions to your assistant, to your, to your actual like human employee, then you should get better at that. And like, you know, so this is, I think this yeah. is, it's, it's all good. It's all, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little skeptical of like, is this the m next revolutionary thing with generative AI? But like, some of this stuff is is very impactful and, and actually it makes us better workers and not robots. <laughs> I don't yeah, I don't think there's any way to predict it because it'll be very interesting to see where it all goes. But I do think there are some some positive takeaways, I feel like that have that we can at least, you know, feel still feel somewhat good about. I, I don't really see it as the the replacement, the, like a great replacement or whatever of like, you know, people and like, you know, and like taking jobs and all that sort of stuff necessarily, at least yet, I think it's much more of an enhancer because right. like, again, just from the stuff I've seen literally in the last few days, actually getting in there and having, I think again, the biggest thing is having a, a goal that you're trying to achieve. And then you can, you know, if you can explain that well enough, then mm -hmm. you'll get the thing.
Yeah. I don't totally. know. Just a very interesting thing. But um, brother, I appreciate your time as always, man. Um, Mark, where thank can you the for, pe- for having me. Hell, hell yeah, dude. Anytime you want. Uh, when, where can the people find you? They probably already know who you are, but just let them know. Yeah. Brendan O'Connell WP, I think is the, the tag on YouTube and Twitter and whatever. If you just search my name to find me. Oh yeah. I'll put uh, links in the description as well. So go, uh, like I said, go sub to Brandon's channel, show him some love. Um, that's all for now, guys. Like I said, we're going to be live here on Thursday, the, what did I say? The 22nd, um, at 11 AM Eastern. So hope to see you there in the chat. A lot of questions. We'd love it. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much. And we will talk to you in the next one. Peace.